So we back with another video today. We got y'all boys with the annual playoff bracket. Today we're going to be going over the play-in. We're going to be going over the playoffs. We're going to go round for round. We're going to go all the way to the finals and give our finals prediction before any of these games are played. Now, I do plan on giving y'all a player tier list going over every player in the NBA before the first round is over. I don't know if I can give it to y'all before the first round starts, but for sure before the first round is over. So if y'all do want that, where it's going to be pretty much including pretty much every player that played this year, significant minutes, should I say. So yeah. And it's really going to be more so catered to playoffs because I did this last year where I did breakdown round for round where I ranked players that was in that round every single time. And then I ranked and then I did like a updated bracket for that next round just in case my bracket broke. Last year, I had a pretty accurate bracket. This year, it may be a little bit tougher. I don't know. But if y'all do want that, make sure to like the video, subscribe, all that good stuff. Let's hop into it. Alright, so start it off, we're going to go from the West. Now, we're going to do the play-in West, and then we're going to do the East play-in, because I want to make sure we lock these in, who I think is going to actually make it out. Now, this is just a playoff bracket. This is not even having any of the teams locked in. So, I do want to go over the play-in. So, for the West, we got the Lakers versus the Pelicans. I honestly think the Lakers may try to duck. The Nuggets, because the Nuggets are the two seed. Because I'm going to be honest, the Lakers definitely would rather play the Thunder than the Nuggets. Now, the thing is, do they care or not? That is the thing. Do they care or not? They could try to go and play the Nuggets off rip and get them out the way and then feel like they can beat anybody else in the playoffs. Because you can, if you get the Nuggets out the way, for sure, you have no doubt that you can beat anybody else in these playoffs. Not even just in the West. So... If you do that, that'll be interesting. Um, for the that'll be an interesting tactic. I think that they should just play it straight up. If I'm the Lakers, I'm probably not doing that. I think that they probably should for their confidence. But if you look at it on the flip side, they could just pretty much duck them, and you could argue they could make it back to the Western Conference Finals again because now they're on the side with the Thunder. Then they gotta play either the Cap the Clippers or the Mavericks. I think those are both winnable series for the Lakers. And then it's most likely going to be the Nuggets in the Western Conference Finals. So that's just me looking ahead for the play-in for the Lakers. And then when it comes to the Pelicans, um, if I'm the Pelicans, whoever I'm playing, whoever in front of me, I'm trying to win because we're not in the situation where we can do that. I don't think the Lakers are either, but they kind of have more experience and veteran presence than the Pelicans. Pelicans don't really have that luxury, in my honest opinion. And I don't think they would even approach it like that. I think that they would really... Every game matters to them. They're going to try to take advantage of that. And if they beat the Lakers in that first play-in game, that's going to give them a lot of confidence. Because if you think about it, the Lakers in the in-season tournament, what happened? The Lakers destroyed them. They destroyed them. When it came to the last game of the season, what happened for the eight seed? Or for the seven, eight seed, whatever. Because if the Pelicans would have won that, the Pelicans would be the six seed. If the Lakers would have won that, they was getting the eighth seed. If they would have lost, the Lakers would have went from being in the other game where they playing either the Warriors or the Kings, and the Pelicans would have been playing locked into playing the Timberwolves. So that's a big significant difference. So in my opinion, I think that this if they win this game, the one that matters the most, that will give them crazy confidence. So yeah, Pelicans, I think, are definitely going to go all out in this game for sure. For sure. Now, this is a game where they play after a day off. The East play two days after. Or, yeah, two days after they haven't played, should I say. So, Sunday is when the last game for everybody. And then Tuesday is the West playing games. And then Wednesday is the East playing games. So, who do I think is going to win this game? I'm going to be honest. AD got hurt at the end of the game. Brandon Ingram, first game back. But I will say this. LeBron defense in that game was eye-opening. If Bron played defense like that again... It's going to be very, very tough for the Pelicans. But the thing I'll say about the Lakers that's really different from last year. Last year, I felt like they was more of a defensive team, but they still had flaws defensively. Like, AD was kind of like the main focal point of the defense for sure. But they still had guys that was not good defenders playing a lot of minutes. They still have those same guys that's not playing a lot of defense, playing a lot of minutes. 
But those guys that's playing a lot, of, that's not playing a lot of defense, getting a lot of minutes, they're better offensively this year, especially like guys like D'Lo. So I think that they're they've kind of leaned more into their offense and leaned less on defense. But if they can get moments in games out of LeBron where he's sticking defense like he did in that last game of the season, I don't really see how the Pelicans can beat them. To be honest, the Pelicans can do all they can to lock down all the other guys, but they don't really have a guy to really guard LeBron. Because Herb Jones is a great perimeter defender, but LeBron is just gonna bully him. I'm gonna be honest; he's just gonna bully him. It just is what it is. Um, and they don't really have anybody for Andy Davis if he plays. So I'm gonna have to go with Lakers on that. I'm gonna have to go with the Lakers on that. Uh, I'm gonna have to go with the Lakers on that. The only thing I'm scared of is 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 the Lakers gonna take that game serious because they would rather play the thunder if i'm the lakers i would definitely rather play the thunder that is something i could see them trying like that could be a tactic that they do but i don't know i'm gonna just go with the lakers i'm gonna go with the safe pick and go with the lakers now on the other side the flip side the winner of the next game is the kings and the warriors i personally am gonna have to go with the warriors the warriors um they beat them in the first round last year um i honestly think the warriors are better this year like I didn't understand how the Warriors was so much worse this year. I think Curry been worse this year, but, like, as a team, I don't see how they was so much worse this year, personally. Like, Jordan Poole wasn't even that crazy last year, and he hasn't been good this year either, really. And I really felt like if it wasn't for Draymond being gone, they would even, you could argue, they would be a much higher seed. Like, you could see the impact of when he was gone and when he played. Like, it was it was probably Draymond, one of his best years of his career. It's actually crazy. Um... So, yeah, I'm going to go with the Warriors on that. Kings, um, I'm not really high on Sabonis. Y'all seen the tier list. A lot of y'all had comments on it. I'm not really high on Sabonis. Um, they're going to really make it, just like they did in the playoffs last year, they're going to really take advantage of all those weaknesses of the Kings. And it's really going to be mainly the things with Sabonis, Kevin Horder being hurt, uh, Malik Monk being hurt. It's going to be really tough for the Kings to win that game. And I really like De'Aaron Fox in a game like this. But yeah, it's not. I, I I can't really fight it. it. I think I think the Warriors gonna win it. I think they just have a better all around team. They have the experience. Yeah, I just think yeah yeah. I might have to go with the Kings on this, or not the Kings, the Warriors on this one. So then it's gonna be the Warriors versus the Pelicans. Now, Warriors versus Pelicans is a very interesting game because I think the Pelicans actually match up really well with the Warriors because they got where those perimeter defenders that they have to go against the Lakers. Those same perimeter defenders work really well against the Warriors because, yeah, those perimeter defenders are going to work against guys like Austin Reeves and D'Lo against the Lakers, but, yo, you still got to worry about the two main guys. On the Warriors, they got a lot of guys they can really throw at Curry, and they can switch a lot of those matchups. And then even then, um, I love Draymond defense this year. I don't know if he can be able to really match the physicality of Zion if he's aggressive. I really think Braun had a great game defensively, but Yaya was not nearly aggressive enough as he should have been in that game. And even in the in-season tournament game, he wasn't aggressive enough. I think in a winner do-or-die game, Zion ain't going to have no choice but to be aggressive. Brandon ain't going to gonna have to really be out there hooping. So that's going to really be a tough one. That's a really tough one. I think the Pelicans are a really underrated team. Me picking the Lakers over them is not me overlooking how good of a team they are. The only real weakness they I think they have defensively is interior defense with uh, Valentinus. But they're kind of like a team where they try to stop you from getting to the rim in terms of uh, in more than rim protection. And they do a really good job at that because they have really good perimeter defenders. Um, so, yeah. Now, there are guys you can take advantage of. CJ McCollum, Zion can kind of get taken advantage of sometimes. But Zion is a still solid, really, really solid and underrated help defender. He's not a good on-ball defender, but he's actually a solid help defender. So, the Pelicans is a really good, really interesting one because they can actually guard those off-ball, on-ball things that the Warriors going to do. And in that game, the Warriors going to have to find a way to score on the ball a lot more than they would probably have to do in a lot of these other games i think the deciding factor is going to be the deciding factor is going to be how how good is brandon ingram how much like how rusty is he after missing all these games and this being like his third game back at this point and how big of a factor is brandon ingram going to be in comparison to the experience of the warriors um that's the tough one because the warriors definitely have the experience but the i'm gonna be honest the 
The on-ball scoring ability of the Warriors in this game, I don't really like it, in my opinion, for the Pelicans. I don't really like that matchup for the Warriors, in my opinion, because I don't really see where they're going to be able to get their points consistently from. Because the Warriors are not a paint-scoring team. That's the weakness of the Pelicans' defense. They're not a, pe a paint-scoring team. The Pelicans are one of the best perimeter defensive teams in the league, and that's really what the Warriors' team is. Um, and, like, Kaminga's going to have to be great in this game, but I don't think... Like, if you're betting on Kaminga to be the key player for the Warriors when you know... Like, if Curry has an off night... I'm not really betting on the Warriors to win those games. Like, even with how good Draymond has been this year, and I think the team outside of Curry has been, I feel like it's been inconsistent, but, like, the talent outside Curry, this is one of the better years, but I just feel like this is just a bad matchup. This is just a bad matchup. I'm going to have to go with the Pelicans here. I'm going to go with the Pelicans here. I'm going to go with the Pelicans here. Let's go to the, uh, let's go to the Heat 76ers. Heat 76ers, uh, as a Heat fan, I'm going to be real with you, man. Last year, I did not believe one bit in us playing the the Bucks. I wanted to play the Celtics first round. When we had to play the Bucks first round, I had zero confidence that we was winning. Zero confidence that we were winning. Zero. So, yeah, that's a fact. I did not believe at all. And they went out there. Carol got hurt in the first game of the series. And they went out there. And they destroyed them the first game. And then Giannis misses two games. The they Bucks come back and destroy us in the second game. Long story short, I didn't believe in them. And they went and Jimmy had one of the best series of all time. It just is what it was. Now, against the 76ers, um, if you've seen my playoff prediction earlier in the season, I had the I had the 76ers coming out the East. That's because I don't really trust anybody in the East. I feel like that's the only reason why the the uh Heat be beating a lot of these teams. They be punking them, and, like, uh, they just, like, Spo just takes advantage of all your discrepancies as a team. He's going to do that. It just is what it is. No matter who you are as a coach, a team, he's going to do that. The reason why they couldn't beat the Nuggets is because the Heat, the Nuggets did the same thing to the Heat. The Heat have issues just like everybody else, but everybody doesn't take advantage of them to the same extent. It just is what it is. Um, But the thing is, with the 76ers, I think that Embiid is different this year. I think that Embiid is different this year. But the thing is with the 76ers, for me, I feel like they offensively, they rely a little. Like, you can kind of see it. I feel like a lot of the things I was confusing at the time when I did that playoff bracket, I really thought that 76ers was just, without Harden, I feel like they had just got more, all their roles kind of got more defined. And I still think that's true to this day. But offensively, that team revolves a little too much around Embiid, in my opinion. To go against a team like the Heat and the Celtics and me to pick those teams right now, today. Now, I don't know if I would say this if I if Embiid had stayed healthy. But with Embiid not staying healthy, the last game he played in, he literally got hurt. I genuinely don't know what to feel. I know that the 76ers beat the Heat in the last game. But if you watch that game, that was the most sloppy back and forth i never seen a game like that where it was like multiple, it was at least five 10-0 runs in that one game. And it was like three of them in one quarter. And the, what, how that game ended with the shot selection out of Terry Rozier, I don't think that's going to really be happening in a playoff scenario. I think Jimmy's going to be coming with it a little bit more. I've, I, as the, bro, the thing is with the 76ers, I think that in that game, Embiid defense was horrible. He was not doing anything. But I don't think his defense has been that good since he came back. And before he was gone, I think he had been a little bit less of a defender than he had been in the past offensive in the regular season. But the thing about Embiid, in the playoffs, Embiid goes up a notch on defense. That's one thing that people don't give Embiid credit for. In the playoffs, he does go down offensively. That's not debatable. But defensively, he goes up. He's one of the best defenders in the world in the playoffs every single time. That's not debatable. So this is a really, really tough matchup because Nick Nurse is one of those coaches that does try to take advantage of the dis deficiencies of the Heat. It's just, can he do it with this team? Offensively, I don't think the 76ers have the capabilities to take advantage of certain things that the Heat kind of lack in. In my opinion, I think Embiid is going to have a good game in this, but it's really going to come down to how good of a game is Maxi going to have. 
that's really what is the X factor in this game for me. Because, yeah, I, I just don't know how good of a game is he going to have. He's had some bad games against Heat. Then he had really, really good game the last one for sure. I don't know if it was the last two. I think the last two he had really good games, though. I know for sure the last one he was phenomenal in, the one that NB played. This is really tough because I think the 76ers defense is better than it has been in the past as a team. And if Embiid is going up a notch, that's going to be really tough for the Heat because offensively, the Heat is not crazy. But defensively, the Heat is really good this year, in my opinion. That's tough. And I'm trying not to be biased on this. I'm really being honest because on one end, I'm trying to stick with the fact that I did have the 76ers making the finals. And on the other end, I did have, I did, I do, I am a Heat fan. It's just really what it is. And I don't even know what to think with the Heat because I watch all their games year in, year out. And what these past players say is Spo tries things to prepare these players for the playoffs. That's why they be so playoff ready. And last year, what the Heat was as a team in the regular season, that's one of the worst seasons of NBA Miami Heat fan basketball I've seen. And I've seen some bad years. That was one of the worst years for sure. Not debatable. What they did in the playoffs was a complete 360. So I don't really know what to expect. Um, if I had to bet on it, if I had to put my hard earned money on it, I would bet more so on the Heat and Spo to come up with a game plan to stop and be because the 76ers offense is a little, in my opinion, the one issue I have with the 76ers right now, I have an issue with all these teams in the East. Don't give it twisted. So we're going to get into that. But with the 76ers, the one issue I have is I feel like their offense is a little too reliant on Embiid without Harden. Like, Embiid, in my opinion, I think he's not going to be as much of a playoff dropper anymore because they've given him the reps. But they don't really have much creation outside of him. I think Tyrese Maxey is a good creation, but he's just inconsistent. He's just inconsistent. Like if this was a team against, if this was a game against like the Pacers, cool. But I'm telling y'all, even if they p get past the Heat, that sep that Knicks series is gonna be tough for the the 76ers. That's gonna be a tough series for them because that's a defensive team, and that's gonna like any team they play that's gonna be a defensive team. It's gonna be tough for them, man. It's gonna be a tough series for the 76ers. I, I'm going to go with the 76ers because the Heat this year, every big game, it really felt like they lost. Now, that would be the biggest Heat thing in, 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 his, in Heat history. That would be the most Heat likely thing to lose all the big time games of the regular season. But when it matters most in the playoffs, y'all win it. I don't know why, but that's just what they do. But I'm going to go with the 76ers. Then when it comes to the Bulls and Hawks, I don't really know if it really matters. I'm going to go with the Heat. If the Hawks win, that's an interesting one because the Hawks, they always play us. They always play us very interestingly, but I'm going to go with the Heat there. And that's the playoff um, or the play-in. So we got the Heat in the 8th seed, 76 in the 7th seed, the Lakers in the 7th seed, the Pelicans in the 8th seed. Let's go back up to the uh, to the West. Now for the West, let's start it off from the top. The Thunder versus the Pelicans. I'm going to go with... Man... Man, that's a good, that's a really good series, man. Like, I don't think people understand. That is a really good series. The Thunder, really good perimeter defense. Pelicans, really good perimeter defense. Like, really good. Yeah, the one thing I'll say for the th this series is, I feel like the Pelicans match up really well for the Thunder. And the Thunder don't really have a guy to stop Zion. Like, I feel like the, the Thunder has shot blocking ability and rim protection ability. It's just like Chet rim protection ability can be a little flawed because he's so thin in the middle, in the inside, that people can bully him. Zion can bully pretty much anybody on the Thunder, bro. He can pretty much bully anybody they put on him. So, like, I don't really like that matchup for the Thunder at all when it comes to Zion. But on the flip side, when it comes to Shea, they can throw Herb at him. They can throw Dyson Daniels at him. They got a lot of guys they can try to throw at Shea for the Pelicans. 
in my opinion. But on the other side, you can really say the Pelicans don't really have anybody to throw at Chet. Which is kind of true. But I think that Chet can kind of get guarded by some of these more lengthy wings. Like, they may be a little undersized for Chet, but they kind of can... You can kind of throw some interesting lineups in this series if I'm the Pelicans, I'm going to be honest. Like, you can try to throw some some uh, lineups with Zion at the five and let him be like a roamer and put like put like one of them big wings or long, lengthy wings like Ingram. Um, Ingram even could try to go stick him. Herb can try to... I think you would just keep Herb or Dyson Daniels on Shea and whichever one is not on Shea, whichever one that's taller is not on Shea, you could try to throw that at Shea and I could think that could be a really interesting lineup for the Pelicans. And that could be really tough for the Thunder to try to work around. Now, at that point, it's going to be on J-Dub. I'm really high on J-Dub. I'm really high on J-Dub. I think J-Dub is going to be the X factor in this. Um, I know Thunder fans are going to be like, but we beat them in the play last year. Bro, I'm going to be honest, man. That was without B.I. Or that was either with. No, that was without Zion. And that's the real key thing with the Thunder. I don't think they really have nobody for Zion. So, yeah. I think this is going to be a seven game, though. This is a seven game. Like, this is like a, as even of a matchup as there is in the playoffs. I really do like this matchup a lot. Um, I think Shea is the best player in the series. But I think Zion could play like he's the best player in the series. But the thing is, I think Shea's game is more suited for the playoffs than Zion, in my opinion. I think Zion could be a playoff dropper because... People can load up in the paint and just try to take away. Because Zion, it's a, it's a scout report on Zion that he can only go one way. So if they try to take that away from him and take away, make him get the ball in his hands a lot more, I think the Pelicans have good shooters around them. So that may not work as well as guys like Julius Randle. And I think Zion is just a much better interior presence than Julius Randle. And I don't think he takes as many dumb shots as Julius Randle. So I think that could be a factor. I, I think Zion could play to the potential of being the best player in the series. But I do have Shea as a top five player. <sighs> but I, I ain't gonna lie. Herb Jones is a really that's a that's a tough matchup, man. That is a very tough match. I'm a, I'm gonna I'm gonna give Shea a bit of a doubt. I'm gonna go Shea in that and I'm gonna go in seven. I'm gonna go in seven. I'm gonna say the Thunder win in seven. The Clippers and the Mavericks. Now this is this is a this is a this is a like a real modern day robbery at this point, man. This is the third time they are meeting in the first round. Every single time has went seven games, every time. And the funniest part is the Mavericks has been an underdog in every single one of them, except maybe this year. Even though they're a lower seed this year, I don't know of how many people think they are underdog this year. And every single time they was the underdog in those previous times, the Mavericks would really be up in the series. So, and then the Clippers would make a comeback because Kawhi would be fantastic. Now, the thing is that's different this year is Kawhi kind of played a lot of games this year, and he's kind of worn his knees out towards the end of the year. And we all know what's wrong with Kawhi. He has a degenerative knee issue. So if Kawhi is not ready to go in this series, I'm giving this to the Mavericks kind of easy. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of giving this to the Mavs kind of easy. But if Kawhi's going in this series, then this is a very, very, very interesting matchup. Very interesting matchup. Very interesting. Um, I think what the what the Clippers going to do kind of similar to what they used to do to the Ma or what the Clippers, yeah, what the Clippers going to try to do to the Mavericks is kind of similar to what they used to do to Luka. They're going to really let Luka go off and have everybody else beat them. And they're going to try to take advantage of the non-Luka minutes. But the thing is, this year, those non-Luka minutes almost are better than when Luka's in the game with Kyrie. With, they, they start running a lot of different types of sets, a lot of motion, a lot of off-ball, a lot of things going on when Luka's off the court. Now, I don't know why that's not going on when Luka's on the court. I feel like even if Luka's having the ball in his hands for the majority of the time, if they have a lot more movement off the ball, that's going to make it a lot harder to guard Luka because you got to pay attention to a lot more stuff. So I feel like that's a little weird that they only do that when he's off the ball. But I will say that Kyrie is just a better off-ball player than Luka. That's just not debatable. So I guess that's why as well. But I think that's kind of a cop-out. I think they could really try to mix in a little bit of everything, no matter who's in the game. But I'm going to go with the Mavericks. I do think that the uh, the, the pickups halfway point to the season, 
I love the Derrick Jones. I love the P.J. Washington. I love the Gafford. I love the Lively. I love the Linus that can really put out there with Luka and Kyrie that, to just go defense. If they want to play Maxi Kleber, they can go with him. They got a lot of guys. They got a lot of guys on the Mavericks to really help out those two guys. And I, I, I as good as I think the Clippers are, I really have been saying that the Nuggets really. I, I, the Nuggets really, you know what I'm saying, the only team I could really honestly see when I made the video originally was the Clippers. You could kind of throw the Mavericks in there at the time, but it really was the Clippers. And, yeah, the, the Mavericks and the Clippers is just not the greatest matchup, especially with – the thing is right now that's really weighing on me is the fact that Kawhi has been injured. How ready is Kawhi going to be for this series? Is he going to get hurt in this series when he comes? I don't know, bro. I don't know. I don't I don't want to bet on the Clippers in this. I'm going to go I'm going to go in 6 for the Mavericks. I'm going to go in 6. The Sim, the Timberwolves and the Suns. I'm going to be honest, if you're the Timberwolves, you really couldn't ask for a better matchup. Um if you're the Suns, you really probably couldn't ask for a better matchup. As, I think if you're the Suns, nah, you probably couldn't ask for a better matchup, I ain't going to lie. Because bro, the Timberwolves, bro, their weaknesses is offense. The Suns' weakness is defense. So both weaknesses are going to go hand in hand, but both strengths are going to go hand in hand. So, like, the Suns' offense is going to be going against the Timberwolves' crazy defense. The Suns' mediocre to bad defense is going to go against the terrible Timberwolves' offense. And that's where it's going to really – that's where we're really going to see the big difference. Now – there are some interesting lines the Suns can run, but I don't know if they're going to be able to run it in this series with Towns being back because they was running some interesting series uh, lineups with KD. It was running some interesting lineups with KD at the five, and that was even with D-Book and uh, Bradley Beal, but that was without Towns. So I don't know. Now, this is another interesting series where, like, you could in injuries could kind of make a factor into it where you got Towns coming back for, like, Two games, really. And then you got Bradley Beal been in and out the lineup all year. Is D-Book going to stay healthy? Is KD going to stay healthy? KD been pretty healthy all year, though. I'm not going to lie. Shout out to KD. He's had one of his best defensive seasons, one of the more underrated scoring seasons. And he's been healthy. So it's like, I'm going to be honest. KD has had a pretty good year this year. I, I got to give him that. I haven't really seen enough people really giving him his, his flowers for that. But the Timberwolves... And the Suns. Now, the thing is here, man, you really could argue that the Suns have the two best players in the series. That's what I would say. Now, some people may say it is the best player in the series. I would call you crazy. I would say that's just giving, bro, false expectations. But I think D-Book is the best two-guard in the league. Ant is a two-guard. And I think Kevin Durant is the best player on the Suns. I think also, when it comes to the Suns, um, D-Book is a playoff riser at this point. I think that's not really debatable. I think people try to – I don't know why D-Book gets as much hate as he does, honestly, but he's a playoff riser in my opinion. Um, but I do think that the, the Timberwolves have – if there's anybody in the playoffs that can match up with the Suns offensively in terms of defense, it's the Timberwolves. They can put Jaden McDaniels on KD. They can put Ant on D-Book, and they can really go toe-to-toe. -to -toe, you know what I'm saying? Mike Conley on Bradley Beal may be the weakness, but even Mike Conley's not a bad defender. You know what I'm saying? Whereas on the other side, the Timberwolves could try to get in the paint on them. But I'm not going to lie. I don't think it really is. I don't really trust Towns to really take advantage of teams in the playoffs. Towns in the playoffs has not really shown me a lot of good stuff, in my honest opinion. The X factor for the Timberwolves is 100% uh, Towns. And the X factor for the Suns is 100% Nurkic, in my opinion. It depends on how, how good is Nurkic playing as a big man. Is he dominating the boards? Is he in foul trouble? That would be my X Factor for the Suns. I'm not really high on Bradley Bill as everybody else. I don't think that's really a big three. I think it's really D Book and KD as a duo, and then they have good Well, I don't I never really like the Bradley Bill pickup because a lot of different things. But yeah, they got great they're gonna have Grayson Allen trying to be like their best perimeter defender. Um KD gonna be playing. That's gonna probably be their second best perimeter defender. KD probably going to be their best shot blocker. Nurkic going to be trying to rim protect. He's going to be getting the rebounds. This going to be an interesting series because is the Timberwolves, how bad is the Timberwolves offense going to be? How bad is the Suns defense going to be? 
I genuinely do not know. I think the Suns defense is a little bit better than what people let on, but the Timberwolves offense is actually bad. It's actually bad. It's really going to come down to how good is Ant going to play in this series, in my opinion. I think Ant could have a good series in this. They don't really have anybody for Ant, in my opinion. They, they, like, there shouldn't be anybody in, in this series that can stay in front of Ant, in my opinion. In my opinion. In my opinion. Like, I like Grayson Allen as a perimeter defender, but he's not he's not locking down an ant. He's not a lot down defender anyway, though. Um, so yeah, that's a very interesting one. But I trust I trust KD and D Book more than I trust that that um that team in the Timberwolves. Because even when you look at guys like Rudy Gobert, I'm not trusting him too much in the playoffs either. Like it's not just really towns that I'm not trusting. I'm not really trusting Rudy Gobert. Like if you look at how they when they played the Nuggets last year, it, Ant was really having to really amp them up to even get that play that game that to even get them to to lock in on that series, bro. Like like bro, like Timberwolves really, they really like wasn't even really ready to even play the Nuggets last year, and they was probably the best matchup for the Nuggets last year. And it really felt like last year it really had to tee them up, hype them up almost every single time, every single game. And when your young player got to do that, that's not, I'm not really feeling it. So yeah, I, I don't know Timberwolves. If they if they beat Suns, I wouldn't be surprised. But I'm gonna go with the Suns in six. I'm gonna go with the Suns in six on this one. Then we got the Nuggets versus the Lakers. I'm going to go with the Nuggets. I don't really... I think that the Lakers... One thing I'll get the Lakers this year, the Lakers are much better offensively because they have shooters. Um, I feel like the big issue last year was they didn't have shooters. I kind of overhyped their defense because AD was moving me. He was moving me. What he was doing in the playoffs, he was moving me. But yeah, I, we know now AD has no chance. Nobody really has no a chance of gar- stopping y- Jokic. It just it really just depends on how aggressive is Jokic. And it just seems like to me when Jokic plays the the Lakers, he sees blood. He sees blood. He smells blood. He sees blood. So yeah, Nuggets, Jamal Murray, Jokic. If everybody stays healthy in this series, I got the Nuggets for sure. And I got the Nuggets in five. Honestly, if it goes to six. I wouldn't be surprised, but yeah, I think the Nuggets going to win this series. I, I I would be heavily surprised if the Lakers win this series. I wouldn't be surprised if it even went seven or six, if the, like the Lakers snuck a couple games, but I would be heavily surprised if the Nuggets won the series. It would have to be because of injury. If it wasn't because of injury or something, I that would be one of the biggest upsets in my opinion I've seen in a minute. I would not lie. I that would be one of the biggest upsets. But I ain't gonna lie. The way LeBron played in that last game, he played pretty crazy defense in that last game. And LeBron been kind of hooping on offense lately too. I, I ain't gonna lie. I said this the other day. This may be LeBron's second best year for the Lakers. Like actually, it may be LeBron's actual second best year. Like if you put everything together, both sides, passing ability, scoring ability. Shooting ability. This probably LeBron's second best year. You could argue it's better than 2020. I wouldn't say that. But I think it's his second best year. And it's not close between everybody and y'all. I think this is his second best year. Moving to the East. Now, when it comes to the East, man. When it comes to the East, we got the Celtics versus the Heat. Classic. Now, the Celtics did beat the Heat four times. They beat them four times. Now... I want to say that to say everything that happened in the regular season does not matter. I can't, based off what the Heat have done in the past, I cannot base what they did in the regular season and put it into the playoffs. I can't do that ever again after last year. Now, I will say that this year feels a lot more like 2021 as a Heat fan than it did 2022 than 2023. I feel like it could have been 2022. There were some aspects that was very similar to 2022, um, where it comes to we've had injuries all year, um, where it comes to we was we had really good stretches, but the thing is that makes it more 2021-like is because we never had good stretches and then had a bad stretch, and then we just had another just really, really good stretch where we solidified 
We was playing like we matched up good against all good teams. Like we had good stretches, but uh, when we had our good stretch, we never had a good stretch where everybody was healthy. We never had one. And you could say at the end, but we didn't beat any. We didn't win any big games at the end when everybody was healthy. And even then, we never. Even when we had a good stretch at the end, we weren't all healthy. Like Terry Rozier was hurt. So it's like. It really does feel like it's twenty it's twenty twenty one where we like we just trying to get healthy. We're just trying to get fully healthy. And on the flip side, the Celtics, just like the Bucks at that point, they was on they was on they was at an all time high, all time confidence. And I'ma be honest, it's gonna be very similar to how they defeat their demons where in the first round they getting them boys out the way where the Bucks twenty twenty, they got they got smacked. They got smacked by the heat. Embarrassed. I would argue in 2023, Celtics being down 3 0 to the Heat was embarrassing. Now they try they came back, but that's embarrassment. One seed being down 3 0 to an eight seed was embarrassing. I don't care how you look at it. Now they did come back. Get them the credit. Get them the credit. Game seven, Tatum got hurt. Get them the, whatever you want to say. All the excuses you want to do. I ain't gonna lie. Being down 3 0 is being down 3 0. That just is what it is. Now, you can say on the flip side, the Heat blew that 3-0 lead, but they ended up finishing the job. Now, Celtics and Heat, no matter what year we're talking about, every single time in the playoffs, they play each other very well. And the Heat play the Celtics better than any team in the league. It is just what it is. This year, though, like I said, regular season was kind of different. The Celtics kind of did give the Heat a lot of work this year. They did. The thing is, a lot of them games, the Heat just wasn't fully healthy, or they were just, I don't know. That one that one time when they played them and they lost about 30, that stretch of games was when they lost seven straight. That was one of the worst stretch of the year. That was that was pretty bad. Like It felt like we was never going to win another game Like because we went from them, then we lost to the Knicks bad, then we lost. We were losing to bad teams bad. Like we was, It was a bad stretch. Oh, man. Celtics and the Heat. Now, the playing game, that's a one-off. That's a one-off game. That's kind of different. Last year, we lost the first playoff playing game. You know what I'm saying? It's just going to come down to how the Celtics going to play Jimmy in this series. Is Jimmy going to be fully healthy? Um, Jimmy hasn't been as good this year as he was last year. I will say that. But as a shoot, three-point shooter, he's been better than pretty much any other year on the Heat. Um, I think this is Tyler Hero best year. Um, Bam is weird this year. I think last year Bam was better offensively. 2022, Bam was, that was Bam's best defensive year. This year, I don't know, man. Bam has been a little, um, he's been a little up and down for me on all aspects. He's still one of the best defensive players in the league, but you know what I'm saying? Like, he's, now one thing I say about Bam that's really giving you the Heat hope is the Heat is really going to be tough for the Heat to win when neither one of their two players is floor spacers. Jimmy shooting 41% for three this year and Bam shooting threes this year, that's a pretty big difference from the past. That's a pretty big difference from the past. Now, um, the X Factor in this series, it's not going to be Tyler Hero. It's not. It's going to be Terry Rozier. It's going to be how good is Terry Rozier in this series. And on the flip side for the Celtics, I'm not going to lie. The person I'm scared the most of is Derek Wright. That's the. Mo- I'm not saying he's an X factor. I I know what Derek White's gonna do. He's gonna hoop in that series, no matter who else hoops. I think the flip side in the Celtics series is either Tatum or Porzingis, cause is Porzingis gonna stay healthy? Is Porzingis gonna play good? Porzingis in his play in in his playoff career is a playoff dropper. That just is a fact. And I think what the Heat is gonna do, they're gonna take away what you want to do the most. And if it's for a full series where he's game planning strictly against you. Spo is going to do that. He's going to take away what you want to do most. What do the Celtics want to do most on offense? Shoot threes. And every single time that they played them in the playoffs, what has he done? He's taken away that three ball. Now, when they do hit the three ball, what happens? They most likely win those games. But nine times out of ten, when they play in a series, they don't have a great shooting series against the Heat. So, I think that this is going to be a very interesting series. Um, I don't want to be biased and pick the Heat, I wouldn't be surprised. Now, let me say this. I wouldn't be surprised at all if the Heat, last year when the Heat beat the Bucks, I was in shock. I was in awe. I couldn't believe it. I literally couldn't believe it. I genuinely could not believe it. If the Heat beat the Celtics, 
I would not be surprised in any shape, shape or form. But I'm going to go with the Celtics, and I'm going to go with the Celtics in five. I think that they beat them in five. I think that they beat them in five. It could be six. It could be six. I'm a Molly. I'm. A, I may have to go six. I may have to go six. But I'm. A, I'm. A, I know. I think the Celtics gonna win. I think the Celtics gonna win. The Cavaliers and the Magic. This is gonna probably be the the series that everybody don't want to watch. Um, I like the Magic a lot. I'm not really high on the Cavs. I'm not really high. I've never been high on the Cavs. I think Evan Mobley has kind of let me down year year after year. Devin, Donovan Mitchell doesn't seem like he's not trying to do really anything else but score. I think he has so much potential as a as an own ball player. But the thing is, he can't play off the ball. Where Darius Garland is a better playmaker to me. But I think Donovan Mitchell he has playmaking flashes. But the thing is, I just don't like that combination together. And it really does feel like the Cavaliers are better when there's two guys playing than when there's all four. And I do think the Magic really do match up well against the Cavaliers defensively. But the Magic is like the is like the Timberwolves East. Where like they're they're probably the best defensive team in the East. Now the Celtics probably are the best defensive team. Debatable. It's the, that's debatable, but you know what I'm saying. Like where the Magic don't really have a great offense; they're really lacking offensively, and they in their best offensive player is a young player. Now, I would argue, um, I would argue both of these teams are young, so that's not that big of a deal for the Magic. But I do think Donovan Mitchell is more trustworthy than the guys on the Magic. The only thing I'll say is for the Cavs. I don't know who they put on fronts. I know what they're going to put on Paolo. They're going to put Evan Mobley on Paolo. they put Evan Mobley on Paolo. And that's going to be a pretty good matchup. I'm not going to lie. That's going to be a pretty interesting matchup. I'm interested to see that. But Franz is going to be the X factor in this series. Because he's going to be he's gonna be playing great defense. I know who's going to be guarding Donovan Mitchell. Jalen Suggs is going to be having that boy. He's going to be having that boy having problems all series. He's going to be having problems all series. I don't think. I'm not saying Donovan Mitchell not going to get his. But I wouldn't be surprised if he does struggle in this series. Because Jalen Suggs is one of the best guard defenders in the league. It just is what it is. He's had one of the best seasons this year. But the thing I say, I say about it, I do think that this Magic does have a little bit more of a playoff team. Whereas they going to play through Paolo. They got shooters around Paolo. Franz Wagner can give him some good secondary ball handling. Paul, Franz Wagner can create for himself. There's some other guys on the team that can create for themselves, but on defense, there's not really any holes defensively for the Magic. But on the other side, for the Cavs, there's multiple holes. And I'm not going to lie, Franz playing at the two in this series, bro, they're going to, their starting lineup, point guard is a six foot, maybe not even that point guard, 5'11. Garland, like 5'11, six foot. Donovan Mitchell, six foot one. I'm telling y'all, Jalen Suggs is 6'5. Franz is 6'10. They can throw Isaac out there. He's 6'11". Paolo is 6'10". Uh, like, Wendell Carter or Big Top, Gorgay, whatever you want to say. Whoever you want to put at the center, 7 foot. Bro, the Magic can really play a really big lineup and take advantage of the size that the Cavs have. And that can be a very bad matchup for the Cavs. Um, the X factor in, in that series for the Cavs, in my opinion, is Donovan Mitchell. How good does Donovan Mitchell play against that defense? If Donovan Mitchell has a good series, they probably do win. But I'm going to go with the Mavericks. I think it's going to be close games, but I'm going to go in six. I'm going to go in six. Um, The Bucks and the Pacers. The Bucks and the Pacers is interesting because I literally don't know what's going on with the Giannis situation. Giannis has a calf strain, and I saw a report that it was a month injury to two months. It said four weeks to eight weeks. That's what it said. But it said that they're saying they're uneasy on if Giannis will be available for game one. So when they're saying he's unavailable for game one, is this a Tyler Hero situation where they're like, Tyler Hero, if the, if the Heat make it to the finals, he could possibly come back for the NBA finals. We saw the NBA finals. He didn't play a game in that NBA finals. So is it one of those situations where they're just trying to hope that he can like be questionable for game one? But is he gonna be quite, is he gonna play a game in that series? If Giannis doesn't play a game in this series, I got the Pacers. If Giannis plays a game in this series, I think it's close. I think it's close. I do think it's close. But I will say, if Giannis does play, I probably have the Bucks. 
I probably have the Bucks. I do think the Bucks defense is bad. I think the Pacers defense is bad. This is gonna be an offensive series. The thing is, since they fired that coach, their de- their offense has not been as good as when they had that coach. Their defense has been a little bit better though. But the Pacers defense has been a little bit better since the All Star break. I had people in my comments telling me that. I don't think it's a good defense, but I have my people in my comments telling me that. I think I like Aaron Neesmith. I think Pascal definitely is going to help their defense be better than what it was. But I think um, that's, that's an interesting team. Them putting 160 on the Hawks to end the year was pretty interesting. That was pretty interesting. That was pretty interesting, man. I, I, I'm going to say that right now. That was very interesting to me to see that. So... Man, I'm really trying to think about this. Because <sighs> Pacers really, like, playing, they beat them. Multiple times in the regular season, they beat them. But Giannis had his best game against them. I'm going to go with the Bucks because I think that Giannis is the best player on the team. If Giannis doesn't play, then obviously this doesn't matter. But I'm going to go with the Bucks in six. I'm going to go with the Bucks in six. The Knicks versus the 76ers. I was talking about this with the Heat earlier. The Knicks... Give the 76ers similar uh, similar um, issues at the Heat. I even think that the Knicks can throw. I don't think that they have anybody as good as Bam to guard Embiid. But they have multiple bodies they can throw at Embiid, which may be better because you know Embiid going to draw fouls. So, like, the fact that Isaiah Hartenstein and Mitchell Robinson are really two good centers in the league, I think that's a positive for them. And then the only thing I say is them not having, like, a huge lineup with Julius Randle being hurt. It's not going to hurt them too much against the 76ers because the 76ers, they're not going to go with, like, this crazy big lineup. They're going to go with, like, Oubre. They're going to go with, like, Tobias Harris at the four. They're going to go with, like, Mel- DeAnthony Melton at the two if he's not healthy. Um, I don't know who they're going at the two. Probably Buddy, but I don't know if they'll go Buddy all the time because I think Buddy's been coming off the bench lately. I know Max is going to be at the one. They may start uh, Lowry, actually. Yeah, it may be Lowry and... And uh, what's the name? So, like, yeah, I think the Knicks can match up well against that. And I think the Knicks can really throw out a lot of defenses at Embiid to make it tough for the, the 76ers to be crazy. The only thing I'll say is, on the flip side, the 76ers are better defensively than they were last year. And they can throw a lot of stuff at Bronson. But I'm going to be honest, this is the same thing I would say with Embiid. If he played the whole year. Embiid... Having them games where he didn't play, we kind of see what that team looks like without Embiid. We can kind of know now that that team, it kind of all revolves around Embiid. If Embiid is not there, it is a very big problem. So what I would do if I'm the Knicks, I'm letting Embiid get his. I'm just letting nobody else do that. I'm letting nobody else do that. I'm just letting nobody else do that. I'm letting Embiid get his. I'm making everybody else beat me. Simple as that. Like, it's just simple as that. Like, if Embiid can beat me by himself, he got it. But no, none of these other guys are going to beat me. It's just simple as that. And I think Tyree Maxey fits perfectly next to Embiid as a, a person that can attack closeout, a person that can really play in that pick and roll and do all these type of things, three-pointer. But if his mid-range is going, it's going to be really tough for the Knicks, to be honest. But I do think the Knicks have guys to try to guard him, too. I think they have a lot of bodies they can throw at him, too. Um... The o- who OG and Anobi is going to guard in this series is going to be very imp- important because is he going to guard Tobias Harris? I think they put, I think they're going to put Josh Hart on Tobias Harris and they put Ananobi on on Maxi. If they put Ananobi on Maxi, then that's that's going to be tough for the 76ers. That's going to be very tough for the 76ers. I think Embiid could go crazy in this series, but I could see the Knicks winning. Because I'm gonna be honest, like if you've seen the Knicks this year, the Knicks, Jalen Brunson have seen pretty much every defense you can throw at him. He's going against the boxing one. He's going against the double teams. He's going against the help defense. He's going against the ice, the slips, the the hard hit. He's going against every single type of look you can give him. And when he gets, he's going to get to his spots consistently. It's going to be, is he, can you, is he hitting his shots or not? That's what it's going to be for Jalen Brunson. That's what it's been since he was with the Mavericks when he was in the playoffs when Luka wasn't there. That's what it was last year when they had Julius Randle. That's what it was when he was when Julius Randle was hurt last year. That's when he played the Heat. That's going what it's going to be this year. 
That's what it's going to be this year. Like, he's going to get to his spots. That's one thing I'll give Jalen Brunson. He's he's going to get to his spots. I don't think he's a playoff dropper. I think he's honestly a playoff riser. If he can play any better than he did in the regular season, I could definitely see the Knicks win this series. Um, I just think the Knicks have a... Oh, man. That is kind of messed up, though. Because I don't think the Knicks have that much offense outside of him either. Like, am I trusting Dante DiVincenzo over Tyrese Maxey? No, I'm not. I'm not. I think Josh Hart is going to give them good minutes. I think all these guys are going to give them good minutes. But I think Embiid is by far the best player on the floor. I do. I'm going to go with the 76ers, but I'm going to go with seven. I think this is going to be a really tough series. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I think this is going to be a really tough series. Why can I not just say... No. No. Okay, I can change it. Okay, 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 okay. Don't don't even look at this. Don't even look at this. Don't even look at this. Okay, don't even look at this. All right, we're going back up to the top for the West. The Thunder versus the Mavericks. Man, this is a matchup. This is a matchup dream right here. I'm not going to lie. This is actually a matchup dream. I'm not going to lie to Thunder. This is... Y'all gonna really go as far as Shea take y'all in this one. Shea and Shay and J Dub gonna have to hoop in this series. Cause I ain't gonna lie, they gonna try to take advantage of Chet in this series. They gonna try to take advantage of Chet in this series. It's gonna come down to how good of a defender is PJ Washington. Can he really keep it up in this series? Um But I ain't gonna lie, I got Luca as the best player in this series. I got Kyrie as the third best player in this series. Can Shea make up for that? How good is Josh, not Josh, but, uh, how good is, um, J-Dub gonna be? Is Josh Giddy gonna be good? He's been good for the past month, I'm not gonna lie. He's been a good basketball player again after the past month. So, if Josh Giddy is a good offensive player in this series, that's gonna make this a really close matchup. I'm leaning the Mavericks because I don't know how playable Josh Giddy is in the playoffs. I don't know how playable he is. I don't. But if he's good in this matchup, that's going to make it close. Because there's weaknesses on the Mavericks offensively, but there's not a weakness on the Mavericks where you're, you're looking at like their weakness on both sides of the floor. Like They can't be played at all. Josh Giddy, if he's bad offensively, he's giving you nothing on the court. Like He can't play. He literally can't play. And he's like a core player of the Thunder. And it's only because he needs the ball in his hands to really play good. So that's a very key thing, a key factor in this series is how good is Josh Giddy in this series. I'm going to go with the Mavericks, man. Um, I think the Thunder have a lot of guys that can throw at Luka. I don't think any of those guys can lock up Luka, though. That's just, like, it just is what it is. And even when he hasn't an, having off games, they got Kyrie. I don't think they have anything for Kyrie for real. So, yeah, that's a very interesting series. I think this goes seven, though. I think this goes seven. I think this actually does go seven. Um, Suns and the Nuggets, this is part two. Second round, part two again. Like, I'm going to be honest. If you're giving hate on the Suns for losing in the second round to the Nuggets, I don't know what to tell you, bro. Like, I don't know what to tell you. I do think this could be a really good series, though. I do. I do. I really do. I think that Nurkic being in this series, I think Nurkic plays Jokic pretty well. Um, but I got the Nuggets. Um the Suns' lack of defense is going to be an issue in this series. They can try to keep up with them. I do think that they kind of gave everybody the map on how to beat the Nuggets. I think the way you beat the Nuggets is kind of similar to what I was saying about Embiid. Let Jokic go off. Once he starts, once everybody starts hooping, and because Jokic is going to hoop regardless. It doesn't matter how, like, he's going to be the most impactful player on the court. It just is what it is. So... I'm going to go, go with the Nuggets. Um, they have the best player on the court. Nine times out of ten, that's going to be the deciding factor. I think it's going to go, go to six again. I think they, it goes six again this year. Then we got the Celtics versus the Magic. I think that this is a very tough matchup for the Celtics as well. Um, I will be leaning harder for the Magic to beat the Celtics than the Heat. The only thing I would say about the Heat, they have more experience and they just play the Celtics better in terms of in out of every team in the playoffs. But they've never played the Magic in the playoffs. I think the Magic actually play them well and they match up very well against the Celtics. They are one of the only teams in the league that can really match up one through five against the Celtics really well, in my opinion. 
Um, it's gonna come down to um, it's gonna come down to health. Um, how good is Anthony Black, Wendell Carter in this series for the Magic? If those guys are playing good, they could beat them. I'm not gonna lie. I really think that any team in the East is beatable. I really do. I'm not trolling. I really think that any team in the East is be could lose any series based off the matchup. I think that this is this is one of the worst matchups for the Celtics, in my opinion. Jonathan Isaac on on uh, 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 Jason Tatum, Franz Wagner on Jalen Brown, Jalen Suggs on whoever he's guarding, like. Like, I, like, bro, I don't know what to tell you. Like, this is a very, very bad matchup for the Celtics. They can throw a lot of guys. They can throw Jalen Suggs at Jalen Brown. They can throw Franz at Tatum. They can throw a lot of, they can throw Paolo at Tatum. They can throw a lot of different guys at both of their two main guys. Um, The Porzingis is the X factor for the Celtics. Again, though, he's going to be the X factor in every single series. That's why I'm honestly like, is, 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 is Tatum overrated? Or is Porzingis underrated? Because you could really argue that, not even argue, I, it's not, in my opinion, it's not close. I think that the most impactful player on the Celtics this season is Porzingis. Is he playing good? Is he healthy? That's just what it is. Uh, if he's healthy and playing good, it's going to be tough for anybody to beat the Celtics because there's not a lot of teams that can really neutralize what he's going to get the Celtics. He's going to get him rip protection. He's going to give them size. He's going to give them a, a, a in, like an in-between game that they don't really have on a team. A lot of people like to say Tatum has that, but Tatum really doesn't want to do that. That's just not what he wants to do for whatever reason. I'm not saying that he can't. He just doesn't want to do it. Porzingis actually wants to get on that mid-range and just shoot over everybody. He does. He just genuinely does. Um, so, yeah, Porzingis is a very key factor. He's going to give them shots and looks that – they're not. They're just not gonna get consistently out of anybody else. It just is what it is. Um, so I don't know what the magic does with him. Window Carter, Gogay, they can try. Nah, I don't really see what they can do against him. So I'm gonna go with the Celtics, but I think this could actually go seven. I think that could go seven. I think that could go seven. And then you got the Bucks versus the 76ers. This is an interesting one because um, Lowry has come from the heat. He knows kind of what you're supposed to do to, to play against the Bucks. Just shoot and just like if like just prioritize your shooting ability. And at the end of the game, make it close. Just make sure it's close at the end of the game. And then the Bucks offense is gonna fall off a cliff. It just is what it is. If they, Cause they're gonna play through Giannis. Now, I will say the scary thing about the Bucks, when they had the other coach, they were the best clutch offense in the league. They were the best clutch team in the league. The best clutch team. Like overall. It wasn't just offense, it was overall. So that was scary. But they got Doc Rivers now. And it's flipped. It's not even close to the same anymore. They blowing leads like crazy again. Like, no. So, like, the Bucks firing their coach is just horrible. Just horrible all around. I don't I don't really know what to say. It's just horrible all around. Just kind of it what it is. Just kind of it what it is. Um, um, it says Bucks to win in seven, but that was because it glitched. Um, I probably got to go with Embiid. I think Embiid, I'm putting a lot of faith in Embiid this year because I do think Embiid is the best player in the East. I do. And I think that his game in the regular season caters to how he going to play in the playoffs. I do think he's going to be a better defender as well in the playoffs, though. So his offense could dip a little bit, but I think it's not going to be as big of a drop off as it has been in the past. Um, the issue is, is he going to be healthy? Is Giannis going to be healthy, though? I think I would bet on Giannis to be healthy more so than Embiid, though. I won't lie. Especially after a series with the Knicks, and the Knicks are going to play physical. The Knicks are going to play very physical. And that could come back to hunt them against Embiid because Embiid's going to draw a lot of fouls off that. But the NBA ain't been calling a lot of fouls lately. I ain't going to lie. So that's an interesting one. But I... The more I think about it, man... Doc Rivers is going against Embiid. Could that have a role in it? 
But that's putting a lot of trust into Doc Rivers, who I do not believe in whatsoever. So, yeah, that's a tough one, man. I That's a very tough one. This may be the series of the playoffs so far, Bucks versus the 76ers. This actually might be the series of the playoffs so far, man, because you got Damian Lillard versus Tyrese Maxey. Got Chris Middleton versus Tobias Harris. Who's going to be more mid? You know what I'm saying? Um, Brooke Lopez versus DeAnthony Melton, Buddy Hill. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, man. I don't know, man. But um, I probably do trust the Bucks team outside Giannis more so than I trust the 76ers team outside Embiid. But I think the 76ers has a far better coach. I'm going with the 76ers. Yeah, I'm going with the 76ers, actually, because, bro, the 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 Bucks game, their best player has so many f- more flaws than Embiid. It just is what it is. The team as a whole has so many more flaws than the 76ers. It just is what it is. It just is what it is. That whole 76ers team is catered to play around Embiid. Now, the Bucks could try to take advantage of those non-Embiid minutes. That is a fact. But I'm going to go with the 76ers, and I'm going to go in seven. I'm going to go in seven on that one. I'm going to go with seven on that one. This is going to be the second year in a row a playing team made the conference finals in the East. Second year in a row. Going back up to the top, we're going to the West, the Mavericks versus the Nuggets. I think that this is going to be a very interesting series, depending on how those bigs are playing with the Mavericks. And bigs, I'm saying Lively. I'm saying Gafford. I'm saying Kleber. I'm saying how are these guys playing, man? It's going to be very important. How much are you giving me? Like, Obviously, obviously, the they have nothing to go against Jokic. But if they honestly follow the game plan of letting Jokic hoop and like minimizing as much as possible of everybody else, because you can stop everybody else. You can stop everybody else in that series. You can genuinely stop everybody else in that series. I think they match up pretty solidly against the Nuggets. Like they could really try to have. I think that I think what the Mavericks would do, they probably put they probably put Kyrie on Jamal Murray. I don't know what they would do. No, they'll probably put Kyrie on KCP. No. Does does Luca usually guard KCP? I think they would probably put Luca on Aaron Gordon. I think they would then put K, Kyrie on KCP, and I think they would put. They would probably put P.J. Washington or Derrick Jr. I think they would put Derrick Jones Jr. on MPJ, and they would put MPJ, or not MPJ, but uh, they would put P.J. on, P, or on, um, they would put P.J. Washington on Jamal Murray. And I think that would be good matchups. That would probably be the best matchups they can possibly do. Maybe you put Derrick Jones Jr. on, maybe you put Derrick Jones Jr. on, yeah, maybe you put Derrick Jones Jr. on Aaron Gordon to try to minimize what he's going to be trying to do off the ball with the cuts and stuff like that because, you know, Luka can kind of get lost off ball and put him more so on, like, a guy like MPJ who's going to be really more so on the perimeter all the time, majority of the time, and he can be prone to take to do bad and stupid stuff. You could try that. But the thing is, on the flip side, for the Nuggets, I think that they have Aaron Gordon. They can put him on Luka. They can put KCP on Kyrie. Like, their the matchups are so defined. Their matchups are so definitive. But the thing is, the thing is, with this one, the Mavericks actually have a guard out of all these teams. I think the Suns, if Bradley Bill can play good, they have a guard that could try to take advantage of Jokic. But I don't think that team is good enough. They don't have the defensive matchups to also go against the Nuggets. I'm, I'm going to be honest. They can try to take Luke out this game. But the X factor in this series is Kyrie. How that pick and roll going to be with Kyrie? That's what we going to really see. If Jokic is an all-time top three, definitive top five, all-time big man. Because if he can play the pick and roll against Kyrie this season in the playoffs, I ain't going to lie. It's going to be conversations to be had. It's going to be conversations. I really do think that that may be a big, that may be the biggest 
discrepancy in the whole series. I think that's a bigger discrepancy than Jokic against the Mavericks bigs. Is uh, Kyrie in the pick and roll attacking uh, Jokic in the drop? Attacking whatever they're going to try to do with Jokic in that pick and roll. Now, I think what the uh, the Nuggets may have to do like some type of adjustment and put... Jokic on like somebody like Derrick Jones Jr. They may try to do something like that instead of putting him on a big. But then if they do that, they probably got to put Aaron Gordon on one of the bigs. And then you got who you putting on Luka. So like, I ain't gonna lie, bro. That could really mess up everything for the Nuggets defensively. But the thing is, I would say, this is what I say. The thing is, I would say the Nuggets actually have the guy. They, they, their defense is better this year than it was last year. They actually have the guys. They actually have the like personnel to like try to throw these crazy defensive lineups out there because they got guys like Peyton Watson. They got um Brown. They got Christian Brown. They got a lot of guys that they can just put in the game and just be like, oh yeah, go out there and play defense. You know what I'm saying? Go out, we don't really need you to do nothing but hustle offense and go out there and play defense. That's really all we need out of you. Like, that's really all we need out of you. Like, like honestly, they can really do that. Because, like, I'm going to be honest. If they let Kyrie attack Jokic in the pick and roll for a full series, I don't know, man. That, that, that I don't know if that's the way. I don't know if that's the way. I don't know if that's the way even if you got Luka getting guarded by Aaron Gordon. I don't know if that's the way no matter who's on who who's on either one of them. But I know for a fact that's not the way with Kyrie. I know that I know for a fact that's not the way. Uh it really depends on how good of a defender is is Aaron Gordon in that series. Cause if Aaron Gordon is playing good defense on Luka in the pick and roll to make it tough for uh them to target Jokic, then it's really gonna be all on Kyrie. But it's gonna be tough, man. Luka is Luka is tough. He's tough. I think he's the second best in the league this year, man. I ain't gonna lie. I, I, hey, I, I was, I was, I was in, I was saying definitive. This is the Nuggets, but I just really cooked with that pick and roll. I don't know. I don't know what the Nuggets do in that pick and roll, man. I really don't because that means they're gonna have to take somebody off the court. Is it gonna be MPJ for more defense? That makes it a lot easier for the Mavericks to play defense at that point because then they're just going to put Luke on whoever the weaker link is on defense. That's all they're going to do. Like, they just going to, whoever the weakest player on uh for the Nuggets, that's who they're going to put Luke on. And Luke has not been bad defensively this year. It's just the effort. It's just the effort. He's been much better defensively than last year. Now, is he a good defender? No. No. But he's been much better. <laughs> it's just simple as that. But the thing is, when it comes to the Nuggets and the Mavericks, man, that, hey. I, got, I almost got to see this now. Like, this is fan fiction at its finest, but I need to see that. I need to see that. Now, the thing is, off the sheer fact, I think the Mavericks duo is better. But hear me out. The fact that I think it's close is the issue. The Nuggets two-man game is one of the most... I'm telling y'all, bro, if when Jokic comes back in the game in that fourth quarter and they get that two-man game going and the Nuggets have the lead, nine times out of ten, the Nuggets are winning that game. Nine times out of ten. When they get that two-man game going, there's nothing you can do. There's literally nothing you can do. Like, it's going to be literally yours against theirs. That's literally what it's going to be. I'm telling you right now. It's going to be yours against theirs. That's what it's going to be. Simple. Um, so that's really making me think, do you really want Jokic to be the guy to beat you? You almost got to make, you almost got to make the way that the Heat played the Nuggets in the, in the, uh, finals. You almost got to play like that. You really got to make it to where Jokic is going one-on-one -on -one for majority of the game. And whenever Jamal Murray gets the ball, you got to make him, you got to make him struggle. That's the person you got to really try to take away. You gotta try to take away his scoring. If you can take away Jamal Murray scoring, I think the I think the Nuggets are beatable. In my opinion. In my opinion, I think the Nuggets are beatable. I'm almost talking myself into the Mavericks beating the Nuggets, man. I would not, bro, after all that, I would not be surprised if the Mavericks beat the Nuggets. I just 
I just don't see Jokic losing, man, to that. I ain't gonna lie, though. If he did lose to somebody, it would probably be him or somebody else. But I ain't gonna lie. That's a tough one. That's a very tough one, man. That is a very... That is a actually a really good series. The Mavericks would have three... This is almost a... Bro, if Mavericks would beat the Nuggets, that's an all-time playoff run. They beat the Clippers who had Russ... James Harden, Paul George, and Kawhi. Then they beat the number one seed, Thunder. Then they go on and beat Jokic. And then they beat either a top three player in the 76ers in beat, or they're beating the best team in the league, the Celtics. That would be a crazy playoff run. But I ain't going to lie. I'm going to have to go with the Nuggets. The fan fiction has to end. Um, I really don't even know why I would pick the Nuggets. Like, I feel like the, the Mavericks don't really have much to go against Jokic. But they do have bodies to throw at Jokic. They do. They do have bodies to at least throw at Jokic. Where early in the season, they had nothing for Jokic. Nothing. I think they have bodies at least to throw at Jokic. I don't think anybody's stopping Jokic one-on-one. Anybody. But I think they actually can come up with a game plan defensively to try to neutralize the Nuggets offense. The only thing I say about the Nuggets this year is they're not as much of an offensive team as they were last year. But when they flip that switch and go into that two-man game, they're still unbeatable. They're still unbeatable. Like, it's, like their defense is much better this year than it was last year. Um, so, yeah. Um, and if Jokic is as good as he was as a defender in the playoffs, is he? if he's as good of a defender this year in the playoffs as he was last year, it's GG's, bro. I don't know what to tell you. It's GG's. Like, it just is what it is. And then, at the end of the day, I ain't gonna lie, Jokic ain't even that bad of a defender. He's just bad in space. He's just bad in space. But I'm gonna be honest. Most seven foot bigs are bad in space. It just is what it is. Um, so I'm gonna go with the Nuggets. I'm gonna go in seven. I'm gonna go in seven. I'm gonna go in seven. Flip side, we going over here to the 76ers versus the Celtics. Um I did this series earlier in the year. Yeah, I, I'm not gonna lie. I don't really see how to. Celtics can lose to the 76ers now because, like, everything I was saying about the the Heat and the Knicks could do to the 76ers, they could kind of do the same thing. And even then, if you go about the go about it the way that the Celtics could also do it, where they just be like, and B can get his, but nobody else is gonna get theirs. They don't really have like if you remember the series from last year, they had two like generational. Playoff games at a Harden to win two two of the three games they won last year. So is is who's who's providing that this year for the uh to to help Embiid in this series? Maxi is he giving you two forty one clutch in the clutch like clutch knocking down big time shots games against this Celtics defense? I don't think he's doing that. I personally don't think he's doing that. So yeah, I'm gonna go with the Celtics. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna honestly say. I'm gonna honestly say in six because I do think that the 76ers also do have some solid matchups, but I think that there's things that the Celtics can take advantage of from the 76ers. Like Maxi, they can take advantage of him defensively. There's not really anybody you can take advantage of on the Celtics besides the NB matchup. Besides that, what you could really argue is like is the Derek White. Tyrese Maxey matchup bigger than a, a bigger defensive than whoever the hell they gonna put on and beat. And I ain't gonna lie, you could really answer that with. In the past, Al Horford has defended and beat very well. I just think this year with how they defended the Celtics have defended and beat in the past. I don't know if that's really gonna work because he's such a much better, well-rounded offensive player. Like he's always been a great scorer, but what he's like. I get he's added, like, he's averaged assists, but really look at the level of passes he's been making this year. Like, he's he's added a whole, like, the, he's had a lot more reps in playmaking to make certain passes that he just wouldn't be prepared to do in the playoffs in previous years. So, I'm going to go with the Celtics, but I would not be surprised if the 76ers won. I'm going to go in six, though. And then the matchup everybody wants to see, I'm not going to lie. This is the finals matchup that people wanted to see last year, I believe. Um, Celtics versus the Nuggets. I think that this is, I think that 
everything that the the 76ers can do defensively to the Celtics, the Nuggets can do. But the Nuggets have better offensive players outside of Embiid than the 76ers. It's just it what it is. Like Jamal Murray is better than Maxi. He's a better playoff player than Maxi at this point. Now, if Maxi goes up to another notch, he is a younger player. Yeah, but I don't think he's giving you the versatility offensively that and shot creation ability that Jamal Murray is giving you. Like Jamal Murray can go in the post. He can score around the rim. He can score from the mid range. He can score from the three point. He can do all of those things. He can do all of those things. It just is what it is. He can do all of those things. He can attack closeouts. He can create for himself when in, when in Jokic is out the game. He can do all of those things. He can do all of those things. It just is what it is. Um, he can do all of those things. Now he's gonna have a tough matchup in this series, but I'm not gonna lie. Jamal Murray is not a guy that's like tough matchups. If Jamal Murray is a guy, if he's hot, like it's not really much you can do to stop him. I'm gonna be honest. So he's gonna be the X factor in this series, no doubt. But you got guys like MPJ, you got guys like Aaron Gordon, you got guys like KCP, you got guys like Christian Braun, Peyton Watson. You got some guys on this in this series for the Nuggets that's gonna be really big impact players as well. Like how, like how good are they gonna be? Like how good uh, defenders is Christian Braun and Peyton Watson gonna be? How good is Aaron Gordon gonna be in this series on both ends? How good of a scorer? How consistent is MPJ gonna be? It's going to be a lot of things in this series that's going to be important. But I got the Nuggets. Um, I just think that the way that you could, that the Celtics could take advantage of the Nuggets is like the Nuggets kind of match up well against them. They have KCP for JB. They have Aaron Gordon for uh, Jason Tatum. Like, And then even then, like the Celtics kind of play more of a five-out go- game. They don't really play a pick-and-roll game. They don't really play a game like the Mavericks where you can really take advantage of really the only defensive weakness that may be in question for the Nuggets. It just is what it is. So I must say the Nuggets, they go back to back and they win in six games. Kind of six, just that point. How many total points will be scored in game one of the finals? I don't know, gang. I'm going to say 216. I'm going to say 216. But, yeah, that's my bracket. We got the Thunder. We got the Lakers beating the Pelicans. The Pelicans getting the eighth seed over the Warriors. We got the Warriors beating the Kings. Um, Over here, I don't know who's beating the Bulls or the Hawks. If I had to bet on it, I would say the Hawks is going to beat the Bulls. But I don't know who's winning that. And I ain't going to lie. Think about it. In hindsight, both of those teams matched up pretty well against the Heat in the regular season. I just got the Heat in that. You can say that's bias. I don't really care. Um, but I got the Heat winning that. And then, but I do have the Heat losing to the 76ers. But I can see that going either way, honestly. And then, going back up to the top, we got the Thunder round one. Mavericks in six. Suns in six. The Nuggets in five. The Celtics in six against the Heat. The Magic in six against the Cavs. But I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be too surprised if the Cavs win this series. I'm not going to lie. The Bucks against the Pacers. But I wouldn't be surprised if the Pacers win that series either. Especially if Giannis is hurt. Then you got the Knicks against the uh, 76ers. I got the 76ers winning that in seven. Then you got in the second round, you got the Mavericks versus the Thunder. I got the Mavericks winning that in seven. The Nuggets in six against the Suns. But I look, he could have went over a little bit more of how big of an X factor Bradley Bill is in that series because he can play a pretty big role. I just don't think that they, he's no, I don't think he's anywhere to the level of Kyrie or Luka in pick and roll. That's just me. That's just me. So yeah, I don't think that was as big of a deal as what I was saying for the Mavericks. But Celtics and Magic, I got the Celtics beating them in seven. I got the the 76ers beating the Bucks in seven, but I could see that going either way. I got the Celtics beating the 76ers in six, but I could see that going either way. And I got the Nuggets beating the Mavericks, but I'm not gonna lie. I could do man, it's your boy Fitz, I'm about to be man. Tell him to bring me my money. Yeah!